this one. Let us go look at this game from Noam and Rodballs. I'm pretty certain that's part of this tournament. Noam and Rodballs. There's Noam. Rodballs has not put in his last win, but obviously is the winner of Rodballs versus Pokalope. So that game is just starting. Watch. Right. Refresh. Now watch. There we go. KFE for Keyforge events. And here we are. All right, Rod Balls is on a Bravnar Dis and Untamed deck. And as soon as I join the game, plays the Pit Lord for two Amber and then wipes the board with a Gateway to Dis. So as to not have to live by the sword that he is, or so as to not die by the sword that he lived by to get that two Amber. <laughs> uh, Noam is on a Mars Shadows Untamed deck called Shamlio, the Villain Warlord. I skipped Rodball's deck name, which is Browbeater Zoom Krebos. Uh, we see Naom. Naom? Noam? I'm going to go with Noam. And whenever you do look at the video on demand, uh, I will probably have mispronounced your name, and you can yell at me then. Uh, we see Rod Balls calling Untamed and throwing down a Dust Pixie to get to Six Amber and a Taliga. This is the one that I have keep messing up uh, and think of when I see Talia. Taliga, each time your opponent plays a creature, you gain an Amber. So it is of critical importance to be able to kill that. And we see, in fact, he gets an Amber from two creatures played now. And Rod Balls is at that, or at 8, is able to forge his key, still sits at 2 because of the two creatures played through Taliga. Um, Taliga was exhausted. I think that was more about getting the Amber from the Nocturnal Maneuvers than any real belief that he was going to fire Reef with Taliga. We see Rodball's calling Brobnar. Mm -hmm. And throwing out a smash, almost certainly going to stun Witch of the Eye. No, choosing to stun Lupo the Scarred. That's probably more of an effort to try and protect Taliga than anything else. I don't think it's going to be successful because... Uh, oh. That would explain it. Order of Events matters. So, the Earthshaker kills off all three power and lower creatures, which killed off the Witch of the Eye. So, stunning the Witch of the Eye would have been useless. So yes, yeah, Smash's stun on Lupo the Scarred was exactly the correct play for Rod Balls to make there. And then uses Unguarded Camp, having more creatures than his opponent. Uh, he, for each creature you have in excess of your opponent, currently creature captures one. So he has two creatures in excess. Right now he is trying to decide which creature will capture an Amber. And we see that he chooses not to put any on Smash, but rather on Valdir and Earthshaker. The most the power most two powerful creatures that he has on the board. Um, back on Noam's turn, we see Mars called and a Bolter put down. When he fights or reaps, he deals two damage to a creature, and if it happens to kill it, purge it. That is then protected by a Dominator, and the Mega Mouth is thrown down on the other side. Mega Mouth is an incredibly useful Mars creature that will enable him when he calls Mars to continue to use his out of faction creatures. On the other hand, Rod Balls has his first key forged already, so sitting on three Amber and having three Brobnar creatures on the board is a pretty decent position. We see Rod Balls calling Untamed uh, and then playing Curiosity, which destroys each scientist creature. There are only two factions that have scientists, Logos and uh, Mars, and in this case, he happens to take out a scientist creature in Mega Mouth. Um, I don't think there are any other factions that have scientists. And um, then he drops a 
Flaxia. Flaxia is the one I always for mistake for Taliga. Drops a Hunting Witch and a Flaxia. Uh, Flaxia ge basically generates three Amber, one through the Hunting Witch and two from her ability because Rod Balls has more creatures than Noam does. We see Noam playing Master Plan and opening up a mystery for us all. I'm going to pause quickly and switch over and advertise in the Discord that I am doing this. Uh, let's see here. And then it plays out. So we missed Noam playing out three more Shadows creatures. Um, Mac the Knife is a really fun one, which is another one of those creatures that belongs to every active house. And as an action, it can Seeker Needle, basically. Deal damage to a creature. If it destroys the creature, gain an Amber. Uh, Nexus and Umbra. Umbra has Skirmish, and whenever she fights, she's healing Amber, so... She has to live through the fight, but as long as she's not attacking something that is hazardous, she's going to live through the fight because of the skirmish. And Nexus is a little bit more underwhelming in this position because there are no artifacts on Rodball's side of the board, but it will keep him from wanting to play any artifacts that he might have in hand. On the other hand, it is a very lopsided uh, key total with two to none, and... No, I'm not even in a position yet to be able to threaten to forge the first key. That doesn't mean that the game is decided by any stretch of the imagination. I've seen bigger comebacks than this, but it is definitely putting a lot of pressure on Noam to make a move soon. And we see Rodball's choosing Brobnar. It looks like he's going to be attacking with Earthshaker. I honestly think that might be a bit of a mistake. I think just reaping across the board would have been the better choice. But now Earthshaker has six damage on it and is vulnerable to Mac the Knife, not, yeah, Mac the Knife killing him. Just for free. <laughs> and without any amber from hand, he doesn't. He's not going to be able to get to the six. To be able to threaten to forge his uh, third key. We see Smash fight Mac the Knife, and then I assume at that point you have to see Valdir fighting Mac the Knife. But, uh, you don't waste a move spinning, clearing Elusive when there are other targets you could target, other targets you could hit. And we, in fact, do see Valdir taking out Mac the Knife. So the fact that Earthshaker is vulnerable to Mac the Knife is significantly less relevant now that Mac the Knife is dead. And then he Rod Balls plays Punch, which is going to give him an Amber. And I assume he's going to hit Umbra, but he hits Smash instead. He must have a uh, Coward's End then. And there, in fact, it is. By hitting Smash, he saved him from Coward's End. That wipes Noam's board, takes out his two uh, untamed creatures. And then he plays out... A, is that a second Looter Goblin in this deck? No, that was from the previous game. Plays out a Looter Goblin. Again, when you reap with him for the remainder of the turn, you gain one whenever an enemy creature is destroyed. And now Noam is, has no board state and is hurting quite a bit from Rod Balls' onslaught. Um, Rod Balls is now in a position where he can just call Brobnar and... Keep calling Brobnar until Noam cleans up the board some. And Mimicry to copy the gateway to Dis, which does in fact clean up the board quite a bit. <laughs> um, and then we see Noam drop out a Dust Pixie. And uh, Nocturnal Maneuvers for Amber, putting him, putting him at 9 Amber, making it a serious challenge for the first key. It may be too late, but it is definitely, definitely putting pressure on Rod Balls to see if he can prevent that first key from being forged. And we see... Oh, hey, you have key forged decks in your uh, match now. But we see Rod Balls popping in. Or not Rod Balls. Oh, key forged decks is looking to 
check and make sure that Rod beat Poke uh, Pokeloke because that match was not recorded in victory. Rod Balls discards loot the bodies because it's not going to do any good. He could have played it, wouldn't have done him any good either way. And they're communicating with the tournament organizer just to clear up the fact that the challenge bracket has not been updated. And we can see that looking at the challenge bracket, um, we are in the semifinals, which means there will be one more game after this one. Possibly two if this one finishes before Studsman Nick. I'll go watch the end of Studsman Nick versus Viper. I have no viewers right now. That is fine. Or, I guess I have six viewers. It's just nobody's in the channel when I load it. Interesting. Well, I hope you are enjoying the stream. Uh... Rod Balls took a small break to go and update the challenge bracket, I assume. And yes, now you see that Rod Balls beat Pokelope. Was not actually recording the correct key outcome. Did one nothing instead of what the actual key outcome was, but that is at least fine. Gets the bracket updated correctly. It doesn't matter in this version because there is no split to uh, finals. It's a single elimination, full bracket. But if there were buys, that is important. So if you ever play in a tournament, make sure you record the number of keys correctly. I'm not sure exactly how the tiebreakers work, but that could easily be a tiebreaker element. And we see Rod Balls throw down Pandemonium to capture one. And Dust Pixie captures one. There's not enough to keep Noam from forging the first key. Uh, we see Master Plan being used and it having Grasping Vines underneath, which bounces the Dominator Bobble back. Um... It was not a spectacular use of Master Plan, but on the other hand, it did have a function. It got the Dominator Bobble. Did the Dominator Bobble end up in your hand? Uh, The Dominator Bobble should be in Rod Ball's hand. I'm not quite sure how to get it there. You may have to enter manual mode. I've seen cards played under Master Plan not quite... Oh, no. He's asking if Master Plan should have been bounced. Because it was given in, to him as a target, but because he has to... Uh... Oh, actually, the order on that does say play it first, and then sacrifice Master Plan. Um, no, I think Noam is correct. That should have gone back to his hand, because you play the card first, and then the uh, Master Plan is not in play to sacrifice. So... I would agree that uh, Crucible Online is wrong, but I am also not a judge. Uh, mm. Yeah. 
I concur with them. They're debating exactly how that should have worked. Because he played the Grasping Vines, which lets him return up to three artifacts to their owner's hand, and targeted Master Plan and the Dominator Bobble. Because he targeted Master Plan, the text on Master Plan is Omni, play the card beneath Master Plan. Sacrifice Master Plan. You play in order as much as possible. The first part is play the card beneath it, which is the Grasping Vines. You fully resolve Grasping Vines, which puts Master Plan back in your hand. And then, because Master Plan is no longer in the play area, it cannot be sacrificed, and that part of the card's text is ignored, because it cannot be completed. I do believe the Master Plan should end up in Noam's hand. But, as I said, I am not any sort of official judge. I read up a lot on the rulings that have been made and keep up with the uh, erratas and clarifications. And I feel like this is the same kind of a situation as Bad Penny getting destroyed by a Bolter, where the Bolter destroys it, and Bad Penny is no longer there to do anything. Uh, to be purged. So they're going to have to manual mode that master plan back into Noam's hand. Which is a interesting usage of master plan that I had not really considered. And Keyforge Dex weighs in as the sponsor of the tournament and the person running it all, making sure that uh, they have prizes together. His ruling is the one that matters, so he rules saying that it should not be sacked. We see no way I'm turning manual mode on to override the way the Crucible's algorithm has worked. And you will see Master Plan very quickly dis disappear from the discard back into Noam's hand. Uh, Keyforge is a pretty complex game with a whole lot of unique potential interactions. It is difficult to account for every possible interaction, so that's the whole reason manual mode exists, is to be able to correct things when the program gets it wrong. And now the gameplay resumes with a Yixia... Yixio Bolter and a Tonk and Squawker to ready the Tonk and fight with it, clearing off the terror. And Noam was in quite a bit of hurt earlier, down two keys to none and not yet threatening to forge the first key. Now has taken control of the board with uh, three powerful Mars creatures, but Rodball is still sitting on two. Two keys and three amber. Throws down a dust imp, which, if killed, will give him two more amber. And uses Gongoozle to hit... Does he want to cause him to discard a card, uh, which would be hitting Tunk? Or kill off one of the other two Mi Mars creatures? Probably Mind Warper, I would think. Um, no, he kills off the dust pixie. I think that was a mistake. I think I would have killed off the Mind Warper, because Mind Warper I, may only be one Amber, but it is a way to get Amber out of your pool. And we see Noam immediately follow up and do exactly that. Use Mind Warper to move an Amber from Rodball's pool. onto Dust Imp and I feel like he might have made a mistake there. Because when he killed the Dust Imp, that gave Rodball the six amber to forge a key and was not able to stop it. Um capturing the amber on the Dust Imp was a good idea. I think killing the Dust Imp, which didn't have to happen, he used the Bolter to kill it, um, I think that was a mistake. 
In fact, I'm certain it was a mistake, because without that, Rod Ball doesn't have six amber here, and isn't able to forge the third key, and Noam still has a chance to win it. But, that's not the way it played out. Rod Balls gets his six amber from, sixth amber from the Dust Imp, and then immediately forges his third key. Overall, a very good game, though. And now we have the finals, which should be Rod Vols. Oh, wait. 